Mr. Moencha, uh, before I come to the studios here, first of all, what is the most recent, if I might use that phrase, uh, position, uh, the AU position on the ongoing political changes or crisis in Libya? What is the stand as we talk now? Uh, thank you, Van uh, First of all, the AU position has not changed much. As you remember that uh, way back in March 2010, the AU, uh, uh, through uh, the Peace and Security Committee, and which was also informed by the Committee of Five Heads of State and Government, did come up with a roadmap uh, for resolving the Libyan crisis. Now that roadmap had a number of elements. Uh, one of the elements was, uh, first of all, uh, ceasefire. Uh, the second aspect of it was requesting uh, for uh, creation of a transitional uh, council body, uh, which in effect meant asking uh, Colonel Gaddafi to hand over power to that transitional council. And the third one, of course, the aspect was to start preparing for the state instrument because, as you know, Libya uh, does not have a constitution, does not have a parliament, and then to organize for uh, an election. And, of course, the essential feature of that roadmap is that uh, the legitimate the aspirations of the people of Libya uh, should be uh, respected. That is the African roadmap and has remained so up to now. Did that, of course, did that, the uh, has changed in the... Did that uh, roadmap for peace, uh, was it, uh, uh, did it get uh, any response from the UN Security Council or was it uh, in fact uh, ignored as some have suggested? Well, some aspect of it was ignored, and we see some aspects of it, uh, at least in the international community, still continue to talk the same language. Uh, first of all, as you know, that uh, when this roadmap was being suggested, uh, there was uh, the no-fly zone. And as you know, that uh, the no-fly zone, uh, all the African uh, members who are members of the Security Council voted for it. And, of course, hereafter, we started to see some divergences in terms of interpretation of what that uh, no-fly zone meant, uh, with some uh, interpretation meaning that uh, it had been exceeded. That the central feature of the non-fly zone was to, to save civilian lives who were under attack by Gaddafi forces. But we started still saw civilian, uh, civilians being killed uh, by both sides now. And, and that was a major area of concern. Uh, and so that is one area that uh, remained uh, under contention. Uh, but finally, of course, uh, the, 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 the rebels... The rebels? For the whole country. So that is uh, a new scenario that we are in now. But what about uh, someone who will come and say, Mr. Moincha, uh, that wait a minute, uh, the Security Council resolution 1973 was very clear, very clear to the extent, frankly, that uh, anybody who read it would have understood precisely what it meant because it even included a phrase suggested that they will use, the UN Security Council will use any means necessary to make sure that uh, the resolution is implemented and enforced. Well, and, and I, I think that is exactly the, the point that uh, you, you now uh, run into interpretation. The, 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 the basic frame for the, uh, the, the do have uh, civilian do lives, civilian lives, and 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 up to now we still see civilians are being killed, and that is a concern. I mean, if you listen. Uh, just uh, two days ago, and we are happy to see that uh, the National Transitional Council is taking this posture, is asking the people of Silt to surrender without having to continue to fight so that you can save civilian lives. And so 
what is important is really the basic principle here is to save civilian lives and that is what has been a major concern for all of us that unnecessary blood has been shed for a cost that could have been avoided i see now what about uh, the fact uh, mr muncho that uh, traditionally whenever a group seizes the capital or captures the capital it is assumed frankly that it has seized power what about in the case of the national transitional council of libya which as you, which of course uh, you and i know has since been in effective control of the capital and uh, the last occupant of course uh, Colonel Muammar Gaddafi, the last time, frankly, anybody heard about him or saw him, he was headed for the nearest political tall grass. Well, I don't know what your question here is, because uh, everybody recognizes that the National Transitional Council is uh, controlling a large part of the country. And uh, the, the most important thing is uh, we should stop you know, uh, people dying. We should bring humanitarian assistance to the people of Libya, and we should start on uh, uh, doing what is necessary to build the, the country in terms of the political structures, that is the constitution, having elections, and, and we should uh, start to see normalcy re return so that the people can go to school, hospital, people get water. Uh, all this still remains... Uh, uh, in limbo because the fighting is still going on and we hope that this phase of it would be done off and uh, we, we get to the next phase as soon as possible. Now when the AU met uh, in a December last week, uh, uh, it seriously decided that uh, it wasn't going to support, for example, the National Transitional Council. Does that uh, imply that uh, it continues to support Muammar Gaddafi and his regime? No, I mean, the AU has never uh, in any way given support to him in, 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 in the sense you are implying. And in any case, the AU position, when it comes to recognition of government, as you know, some of the countries in Africa have recognized, some have decided not to, and, and I think that's their sovereign right, and uh, they should be able to retain it uh, until they, they clarify, and I, I guess there are a number of uh, procedures uh, each country goes through before they come to that point. And well, I think that is the right to have returned to themselves. I see. Well, time is not our uh, best. Of course, I uh, will come to you back, uh, come back to you after the break.